If you head onto Google and search bad animation, you'll be greeted by endless images from Naruto, Dragon Ball, One Piece, and countless other shows. While you'll find some genuinely valid examples of poor animation, the vast majority demonstrate that there's a real issue in the anime community. A lot of people lack even the most basic understanding of what bad animation is. So let's make things easy and start with what bad animation isn't. Screenshots of in-betweens are not bad animation. There's a very frustrating habit in the community of pausing during sequences and passing off funny looking in-betweens as examples of poor work. In-betweens exist to facilitate motion. They are not the keyframes within a sequence. Even the most outstanding of scenes can be packed with funny looking in-betweens, but that doesn't somehow make the overall scene bad. In the vast majority of cases, you cannot see them in motion, and that's perfectly fine. They've introduced the required fluidity into a scene, and that's all they exist for. That's not to say in-betweens get a free pass, they are perfectly capable of being bad, and bad in-betweening can absolutely ruin a scene. For example, this dialogue scene in just because has the character's entire face change shape as it moves between keyframe and in-between. There's certainly something to be said about the general transition of the in-betweening role moving from young animators within a studio to outsourced factory farms, but let's be very clear and honest, that's not at all where the conversation is when these shots are brought to light. Time and time again in-betweens are used in genuine attempts to discredit scenes, and I think it's time to challenge that and help foster more nuanced criticism. If tweens very obviously break a scene, then sure, talk about that and talk about it in motion, but there is nothing of worth found in posting stills with zero context. Next, exaggeration is not bad animation. Two of the founding principles of animation are squash and stretch and exaggeration. The purpose of the former is to give a sense of weight and flexibility to an object or person, while the latter exists as a powerful tool for creativity, as imitating reality is pretty dull. Squash and stretch has been in use for decades and decades decades, and yet despite this, scenes including it are some of the most commonly cited as examples of poor work. Whether it be the exaggerated face as Sasuke takes a punch, Android 17's extended limbs, or Satoshi Ash's face as he gleams with excitement, they've all come under fire from certain parts of the various fandoms. Again, it's an issue with fans pausing animation in motion and commenting on what they apparently don't understand, or it's a bizarre hatred that their cartoons dare to look like cartoons. Squash and stretch is essential. If you ignore it, you end up with animation that looks like weird sentient puppets. Exaggeration is equally critical. In live action, actors can convey a number of emotions through micro-expressions. A voice can only do so much though, so some of the most exemplary examples of character acting often elevate a performance through wonderful exaggeration. The same goes for action scenes too. Horrifying facial expressions can do wonders of selling the impact of a punch. Ugly is often equated with bad, but ugly can make an audience feel uncomfortable and that's very much the intent. Art evokes emotion and it's okay for those emotions to be negative. Negative emotions can elevate the most dramatic of scenes. It's okay to find exaggeration and squash and stretch too extreme in certain places. Naruto vs Pain is one of the most spectacularly animated episodes in the show. It's filled to the brim with some of the best animators in the industry, but it's also one of the most divisive episodes because these animators are hugely idiosyncratic taking these techniques to the extreme in very overt ways. For some fans, these extreme visuals are breathtaking and hugely memorable. For others, they're taken entirely out of the show and wish for a more grounded approach. Both viewpoints are perfectly fine, but it would be outright disingenuous and frankly incorrect to say it's badly animated. Idiosyncratic expression is commonly mistaken for bad animation. Episode 4 of Gurren Lagann and Episode 7 of Kemonozume are from Osamu Kobayashi, who has an incredibly distinctive style. He was personally invited aboard by the director Hiroyuki Imayashi in Gurren Lagann and allowed to do his own thing despite Kobayashi asking whether his drawings would be corrected. Fans kicked up a huge stink, which led to a co-founder of Studio Gainax, Takami Akai, coming out and quite bluntly saying, the quality hasn't dropped, the style changed. The staff really shouldn't listen to comments from amateurs who don't know any better, but only from animation industry people. It's unfortunate that this had to happen and it didn't really go very well for Akai, but it was necessary. Loose, minimalist, or even just deviations from a set style are often met with hugely negative reception. Naoki Tate's loose style and 
extreme use of smears are criticised regularly, for example. Many fans don't like change and struggle to separate their distaste for a style with an accurate assessment of its quality. So with all that said, let's look at what exactly bad animation really is. One of the most obvious examples would be a scene that entirely disregards how form, impact and momentum works. Episodes 5, 24 and 33 of Dragon Ball Super are the three worst episodes in the series. They're packed to the brim with anatomically incorrect forms which, contrary to what a lot of people say, do actually matter when it comes to animation. You can separate art to some degree, things in movement or in the distance will often be lower detail and thus excused, but if the form falls apart well outside of intentional exaggeration, then your animation falls apart too. The movement itself is incredibly clunky, the poses, even if you take them as stills, lack any sense of dynamism. In movement, they defy the principle of inertia which leads to very awkward and stiff animation, and with little use of follow through, the impacts just feel hollow. Another example would be limited animation. Limited animation is not necessarily poor in and of itself, but it absolutely can be done poorly. And I think the most recent example comes from a show ironically named Dynamic Chord. Whether it be the horrendous band sequences or the infamous bike scene, the animation relies heavily on digital keyframing, moving components of stills around to create bizarre puppet-like movement. It's distracting very disturbing at times and definitely not good. It's a fine example that well-drawn art can never ever sit in place of animation. Moving well away from the specifics of actual movement, it's also perfectly fine to levy criticisms at episodes as a whole, even if they do contain one or two great sequences. If an episode's supervision is lacking, leading to characters changing styles drastically from scene to scene, it might not necessarily mean the episode is badly animated, but startling inconsistency within an episode is not a great sign of polish. It's fine for idiosyncratic animators to strut their stuff in key moments or even entire episodes as we mentioned earlier, but if you can literally see the key animator change from cut to cut to cut, there's probably a real issue there. There are so many different ways to criticise animation fairly. You don't need to result to pausing on in-betweens or zooming in on low detail characters in the background. There are so many hilarious examples out there. I do it and I laugh about it with friends. That is 100% fine, but passing them off as legitimate evidence for your criticisms is a very good way to get nobody to take you seriously. This video isn't about telling you to shut up and just enjoy things, it's about challenging how you view your anime, it's about making you question whether something's bad or just different, whether you're really being fair when you're pausing on something intended to be seen in motion. I am 100% sat up on my high horse right now, and that's absolutely going to get under some people's skin, but I really hope it doesn't, because I don't have better eyes than any of you, my opinion on what's good and what isn't aren't facts, I just want to be able to have discussions where we're being reasonable, and we can talk about why something works or doesn't work, without resorting to examples that should really be reserved for comedy. No more lazy talk, no more budget talk, let's focus on the who and the why, and once we're comfortable with that, we can shitpost in-betweens in peace. Thank you so much for listening and putting up with Mr. Negative over here. Hope this was at the very least something useful to pass around, if not informative for yourself. I know that in a lot of communities this isn't much of an issue anymore, but in many of the larger series mentioned throughout this video, it's unfortunately still rampant and I really wanted to play a small part in attempting to oust it. Let me know what shows, episodes or scenes you find to be really badly animated, weigh in on what I've mentioned in the video and of course feel free to ask any questions. Be sure to rate the video and I will see you next time. Really, it's amazing. Trust me, go and re-watch it. Delete your comment, go watch the episode again. Norio Matsumoto, Shingo Yamashita, Kenichi Kutsuna. There are so many amazing animators on that episode. Go in with a fresh mind. You will enjoy it, I promise. Cartoons may look like cartoons. It's okay. Looney Tunes legs, they're fun. Naruto is allowed to look fun. Go, now. If you don't like it, it's okay, but we'll never be friends.